welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. Good Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It's the 23rd of March, and as always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. Now, it has been a pretty quiet period for many in the interior and the west coast, the Alaska Peninsula, mostly. Kodiak Island, mostly. Southeastern Alaska, not so much, but you're getting a break right now. Uh, no matter where you are in Alaska, uh, remember you can always call the Alaska Weather Information Line at 800-472-0391. You can always find your forecast, the latest one, at weather.gov slash Alaska. Once you click on the map, that'll take you to your nearest weather forecast office in Fairbanks, Juneau, or Anchorage. You can always follow us on social media, and if you had been, you'll see some of these images that I'm about to share with you, and that's always a good way to share your images and your pictures and your experience in your part of Alaska with us. If you've got a wonderful picture of some weather phenomenon or a cloud to share, uh, let us know and just post it right there, either on Twitter, on Instagram, and tag us, or put it on Facebook. We'd love to see that. nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov is a great way to find us in email as well. If you've got a question about what you see or would like to know some uh, more about the weather that you're experiencing, please contact us that way as well. Now, for those of you keeping track, this is just one example, but we have been in a pretty stagnant or non-moving or non-changing weather pattern uh, for several days, and for some cases up to 23 days. We'll use Anchorage as an example for the number of dry days adding up because it's an easy number to find. Since uh, Monday, February 27th, that was the last time we had measurable precipitation. In that case, it was snow at the Ted Stevens International Airport. Since then, it has not rained or snowed uh, anywhere at the, the airport at all, and uh, probably for most of the rest of town. While that is impressive, that's certainly not record setting at least not yet. The number right now is 37 days for back-to-back -back days without rain or snow or any other type of precipitation for that matter. So we have a way to go before we even approach that record, uh, about two weeks or so. But we are starting to get up on one of those drier stretches. March and April are some of the driest months, or are the driest months, throughout the calendar year for Anchorage. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see this number go up a little bit more. But when you start talking about statistics and the most was in a record setting day or a record setting stretch like 37 days would be, it gets pretty hard to break or even tie some of those records. So we'll see what happens, but we're keeping track of this. And if you've thought you've seen a lot of this uh, large ball of gas up in the sky lately, well, you're right. You have. It is a little bit unusual, but not unprecedented. In the meantime, something that we only do once a year is a tsunami warning test on Wednesday. And uh, this is about a week out, so next Wednesday, 1015, some of you will hear and see and experience a statewide test of the tsunami warning system through the Emergency Management System of Alaska. That'll be Wednesday, March 29th, 1015. Now, there will not be, we hope, a real tsunami at that time. Of course, if there is a threat, we'll postpone the test. But it is an excellent time to practice what you will do when a real tsunami warning is issued. What do you do? If you don't know, use the next week to find out how you will behave if a real tsunami is threatening your community, whether that's Sandpoint or Kodiak or Homer or in Prince William Sound 
wherever you are, if you're on the coast, you may have a tsunami, tsunami threat and you'll need to rehearse what you do at your work, home, school, church, or business. And if you don't practice, you won't be prepared when the real event happens. So again, chill, it's a drill on Wednesday, March 29th, 10, 15, a little less than a week from now. We'll be going over this a couple more times as we get closer to that day. In the meantime, back to the weather. Not a whole lot going on right here. That's why we're talking about some of these other things. High pressure's in charge right now. And it looks like it's going to stay that way, at least through tonight. Temps will cool off into the single digits and teens for South Central. Look at all that clear sky and sunshine for Southwest. Look at Southeast also getting in on the dry weather fun in most cases today. Saw a couple reports of snow there around Yakutat. Looked like it might be coming down a little bit hard for a few minutes. Same goes for Haines looking at a little bit of rainfall in the region and then also down toward uh, Hyder and uh, places like uh, Ketchikan. Metlakatla looked like it made it up to 48 degrees today. I believe Wrangell had you beat in the low 50s this afternoon. So if you're really wanting some heat, especially if you're in Tanana where it started out at 25 below this morning, head to southeast. Catch a quick flight or uh, jump on the boat and head that way because this is where the heat is right now. Uh, attempts out in the Aleutians will be climbing up in the next couple days, but you can see a very bright band of white clouds there. That tells us a weather pattern change is coming, and that also gives us reason to suspect that that 37-day stretch of dry weather, that is the all-time longest stretch of dry weather for Anchorage, probably won't last. It could, but mm, it's going to be tough to beat when you've got a low-pressure system out here across the North Pacific that really, really wants to move eastward. For now, though, high pressure is in charge, and it's keeping things fairly quiet across the Bering Sea. Small seas, light winds across the west coast. It is allowing a little bit of snow and colder winds to move across the Arctic coast, though. Those west to easterly winds are pushing colder air out of the Arctic and moving those across the north slope. We'll see one wave work across today. You can see those brighter white clouds there. That's the front. Behind that is another one. You'll see that as we get into Saturday's map. There's the first map with uh, periods of snow expected to continue around the Chukchi coast today. And again tonight, high pressure sitting across the bearing at 1,027 millibars, some light snow for places near Savunga and Nunavak Island. Uh, remember how we had a somewhat organized low pressure system across the eastern gulf? It's gone. <laughs> it's fallen apart. These two systems, really all that remain, and you can barely detect them in the satellite picture, two tiny little swirls there. There is a stronger system off the Pacific Northwest coast. This is going to push more of its energy into the Pacific Northwest, but it will bring up some moisture across southern parts of southeast, and it is in part responsible for some of the milder weather you're experiencing now. Clear, dry conditions all the way across the middle and upper Yukon Valley. Uh, what you're seeing in the satellite picture here, a lot of this is just white, is snow cover across the mountains and the tundra. And then this, of course, would be the ice edge visibly seen on the satellite picture and only about uh, 35 to 40 nautical miles or so from St. Paul. And it's still creeping west and south as we look at that high pressure ridge helping to move the ice gradually southward. In the meantime, as we get into tonight, if you look at the very bottom of your screen here, a 964 millibar low is working in easterly winds across the central and western Aleutians. Periods of rain and snow, most likely more rain than snow across the central and western chain. High pressure on the north side of this, pushing westerly winds across the north slope, some pockets of snow there. And our ragged low pressure system across the Gulf of Alaska finally gives it up, it looks like. Uh, periods of rain and snow showers just widely scattered across the Gulf. A better chance for maybe some rain and snow mix across southern parts of southeast, maybe creeping up towards Sitka. But it looks like mostly uh, Juneau will be looking at a better chance for increasing clouds than uh, precipitation coming your way. Snow showers a little bit farther north around Skagway, Haines up toward Yakutat, and maybe as close to south central as Prince William Sound. For Friday, more of the same. It looks like more clouds than precipitation across northern parts of southeast. A, a chance, at least a better chance, continues for southern parts of the Panhandle with rain and snow there. Low pressure sitting very close to high to Gwaii at 995 millibars. And again, we find a trough of low pressure snaking all the way up across the northern Gulf and into the Susitna Valley. This, again, is helping to keep those northerly and dry winds draining out into places like Kodiak Island in the Alaska Peninsula and the west coast. Light winds, small seas for most of the west coast there, and our cold front up north still moving eastward slowly and falling apart, and so are the snow showers that are associated with it. 
Across the central and western chain, those easterlies will likely strengthen as we head toward the end of the week. Notice that front didn't move very much. It's not going to because that high pressure system off the coast of Wales and near Savunga and Gamble hasn't moved either. That's sitting at 1,022 millibars. You might find some freezing fog around Kotzebue Sound as you get into Friday and probably again on Saturday. Another cold front drops in across the north slope. That front moving very slowly from west to east will bring some snow. Most of that looks to be offshore. Across southeast, we'll see an opportunity for some light rainfall as we get into Saturday for more parts of the Panhandle. Uh, maybe the further north you go toward Haines, Skagway, and perhaps Yakutat, you'll be right on that edge between rain and snow. Still looks dry in south central. Prince William Sound may see some coastal areas of rain and snow. And our low pressure system out in the west hasn't moved very much. That's really not a good sign for seeing a progressive weather system change anything else where it's been very dry for very long. So for Saturday and Sunday, it doesn't look like we're going to see a monumental change in the weather pattern if you're counting those dry days, again, up around uh, the 20 degree range right now. Low pressure will sit south and west of Adak and south of Kiska at 982 millibars and rain and uh, well, some easterly winds will focus on you out there. Here's the temps today. We saw readings in the 30s in the northern panhandle, 40s for the middle uh, center sections of the panhandle and the further south you go again, Wrangell in the 50s today, uh, considerably milder. Uh, the further south you went, it looked like Metlakotla made it up to 48 degrees there. 26 around Portage and Whittier today. Mid-30s for Valdez and Cordova. 34 in uh, Seward, 32 in Homer around the 3 o'clock hour. 28 in Kenai. Uh, fairly mild day around Anchorage. Not quite at the average, though. 34 in Talkeetna. It was 11 in Fairbanks. 18 in Eagle. 12 in Fort Yukon. Single digits for Arctic Village. 1 around Anaktuvik Pass. 9 in Barrow, 10 for Akdesuk, warmer as you move inland, 8 around Kaktovik, 10 for Wainwright, and as you get into Kotzebue Sound, we saw some cooler readings around Kotzebue and Kibbalina, anywhere from 5 to 10 below there today. Shishmaref was 5 degrees for our friends watching there tonight. 14 in Nome, 19 in Unalakleet, 21 in Galena, uh, about 21 in Anvik, 13 degrees around Bethel. Lake Iliamna made it into the 20s this afternoon. King Salmon and Dillingham also in the mid to upper 20s. Kodiak Island, uh, mid to upper 30s for you. Around Sandpoint and southward, we saw temps above freezing. Sandpoint was 36, False Pass and Cold Bay also in the mid-30s. Unalaska and Dutch Harbor, 36, 32 in St. Paul, and close to 40 degrees for the central and western chain. Overnight lows will go well below zero once again for the middle Tanana Valley, North Pole, uh, Tanana, uh, many areas upstream and downstream, looking at temps anywhere from 5 to 20 below, 15 below for Fort Yukon, close to 10 below for the North Slope. The Seward Peninsula, anywhere from 5 to 10 below, including Nome, about 3 degrees above zero in Bethel, 5 for Nunavak Island, 11 around Savunga, 22 for St. Paul and St. George, 23 in Kodiak, 20s and 30s for most of Southeast, but very close to freezing from any areas south of Juneau. Uh, looks like teens and 20s for the Alaska Peninsula and mid to upper 30s for most of the chain. High temps tomorrow in the teens and 20s for the Kuskokwim Valley as well as the lower and middle Yukon Valley. Uh, mid to upper teens for most of the upper Tanana and upper Yukon. 7 for Arctic Village. Uh, looks like Kotzebue close to 6, 20 in Bethel. Uh, southeast looking at highs in the lower to mid 40s again tomorrow. In the Alaska Peninsula in the chain, 30s and 40s there with south central uh, creeping up toward the freezing point once again. On to flying weather, IFR will continue ahead of that front as that's moving eastward out across the west and VFR to IFR conditions fairly isolated across the very western coastal edge of the YK Delta and then IFR conditions will be gradually creeping northward across the western chain. Apache MVFR across southern parts of southeast expanding just a little bit more uh, north of uh, Ketchikan and up toward Petersburg and Wrangell as we go through the afternoon. MVFR for the mainly the Beaufort Seacoast and generally east of Barrow and Wainwright. And there's that IFR creeping northward ever so slightly toward Adak and Kiska by the afternoon. Pass conditions, Anaktuvik Pass should see improvements from the snow that could be falling there right now to tomorrow morning. VFR conditions expected by the afternoon. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, Rainy Pass, all looking good tomorrow. What about uh, Windy Pass? Visual flight rules expected there. Isabel Pass may have some MVFR developing in the region by the afternoon. That could linger into the evening. Mentasta Pass also expecting some changes to MVFR. Tanita Pass, we expect visual flight rule all day long. Same goes for Portage Pass. A nice day flying there tomorrow and for Chilkoot and White Pass. More of the same. Freezing level shows warmer air is building just south of the chain, lifting northward with levels as high as two to 4,000 feet across southeast in the eastern gulf. 
2,000 foot freezing levels gradually creeping in over the Dixon entrance, the surface freezing line a little bit further north, just south of Juneau and north of Sitka to Yakutat, and then just south of Kodiak Island all the way out toward Dutch Harbor on Alaska for the morning hours. Icing potential remains fairly isolated. Uh, we're looking at central and western parts of the chain seeing light uh, icing potential there generally above 3,000 feet and for southeastern Alaska again with that moist and warm air trying to work its way in these levels will probably climb in the next couple days just a little bit but the threat remains fairly isolated to the Dixon entrance region Haida Gwaii and points southward and maybe working its way as far north as Ketchikan and Annette but otherwise no significant threats for the mainland. The jet stream shows low pressure across the Gulf, really sitting where it has been for quite some time. Also across the North Pacific, that's associated with our surface system that we see on the surface charts. And then the broad westerlies working across the North Slope, or what you see there coming in across the Arctic Ocean with speeds anywhere from 60 to 80 knots. And then we get into more of that northwesterly flow across the West Coast. None of that has really changed that much. The orientation of what's left of this high pressure ridge it's kind of bending around a little bit and depending on how far that gets bent over uh, that'll change the surface weather as we go through the rest of the week and especially next weekend uh, when it looks like we may start to see some larger shifts in the overall weather pattern. Time will tell. Low pressure across southeast guiding in those northerlies out of the interior and into the Gulf anywhere from 10 to 30 knots with westerlies across the north slope and south and easterly winds across the central and western chain 30 to as high as 45 knots with high pressure in the bearing. It's a little further north around the bearing straight at 3,000 feet. Low pressure is light across the uh, eastern Gulf Coast and southeast. Uh, 10 to 15 knot winds coming off of the interior more of an east to westerly flow across the west coast. We keep our westerlies across the north slope 15 to 20 knots and a stronger south and easterly flow across the southern bearing and the chain up to 50 knots there. So turbulence will be building across the chain below 4,000 feet and watch for some light to isolated moderate across the Dixon entrance region below 4,000 feet there as well. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'm back with your sea ice edge update as well as your marine weather here in just a few minutes. Star Qualities. Hey there, stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. It's embarrassing to admit, but Dean and I have favorite stars. Oh, who's embarrassed? It's true. Now, you may think we've been looking at the stars too long, but some stars just have character. Stars vary in brightness, size, distance, and especially color. When we think of stars, we immediately think they're all white. Not so. Stars come in all colors of the rainbow, from ruby red to tangerine, from platinum blonde to deep blue. And these distinct colors that you can see with the naked eye tell us a lot. Here, let's show you. We have our sky set for any night this week after sunset facing southwest. There you'll find the constellation Orion the Hunter with its distinctive belt of three stars. If you look a little closer, you'll see the stars of different brightness and color. Star color is an indication of its temperature, blue stars being the hottest and red stars being the coldest. You can really see the colors of the brightest stars, like those in Orion. Most of his stars are blue, like the belt stars Alnitak, Alnilam, and Mintaka. And Orion's left foot, the star Rigel, is blue too. But my favorite blue star is in Orion's shoulder, called Bellatrix. Bellatrix is one of the hottest stars at over 38,000 degrees. Through a telescope, Bellatrix is the deepest blue I've ever seen. Whenever I show this star to visitors at the observatory, they become mesmerized. Bellatrix has a mysterious history. Its name means beautiful Amazon woman star. The star's influence was said to produce strong qualities in women and rendered those born under it lucky and loquacious. However, little else is known about the origins of this name. But what is such a feminine star doing in Orion, the biggest, baddest macho man in the sky? Well, as tough as Orion is, I guess he's still in touch with his feminine side. Marking Orion's other shoulder is the star Betelgeuse. Actually, in most legends, Orion has his right arm raised holding a club, and Betelgeuse marks his uh, underarm. Well, Betelgeuse roughly translates from ancient Arabic as armpit of the giant. Not only does this star have a colorful name, but it also shines with a beautiful red glow. 
This color gives us a hint to its temperature, about 5,800 degrees on its surface, much colder than blue Bellatrix. The Native Americans of the Amazon River Valley link these two, Bellatrix and Beetlejuice, in a mythological story. They picture Bellatrix as a young boy swiftly paddling his canoe while old man Beetlejuice is struggling to keep up. But the brightest star in the night sky is the dog star Sirius, over to the left of Orion. Sirius blazes with a stark white light in the south and a temperature of about 17,000 degrees. Sirius is a tiny star compared to blue Bellatrix and is almost nothing next to behemoth Betelgeuse. The only reason Sirius is so bright is because it's so much closer to us, only 8.6 light years away, compared to over 240 light years to Bellatrix and 640 light years to Betelgeuse. Capella is a bright star really high in the western sky this evening. Capella is similar to our sun in temperature, and so it should look about the same color, yellowish white. But Capella is much larger. Plus, there's not just one star there, but four stars orbiting each other. Imagine all the sunsets and sunrises as you could see from a planet in a system with four suns. Like Capella, our sun falls right in the middle of the temperature spectrum. With a surface temperature of roughly 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the sun bathes us in the yellow white light we all know and love. I know that dimmer stars all appear white to our eyes, but if you look at these same stars through binoculars or a telescope, you'll see their individual colors more distinctly. From red to blue, the hues are subtle, but once you train your eye to search out these variations of color, you may discover that you have favorite stars too. Keep looking, looking up. time for a quick check of your sea ice edge out across the bearing. Uh, this is about as far south and west as we've seen the ice edge over the course of the season. And remember, with high pressure in charge and northerly winds coming down the coast, we're expecting that this edge is going to move to the south and to the west, maybe just a little bit more in the next couple of days. Right now, that ice edge, at least the white part where the higher concentrations are above 80%, uh, we could see that uh, drifting a little bit further west and south. Right now we're about 35 to about 45 nautical miles to the north and east of St. Paul. But the blue edge here are the strips of ice, less than 80% concentration. So it's possible you'll see ice before you get to that uh, main concentration area there. So good luck with the crabs and the cod and everything else out there and stay safe in the bearing. Here's a look across southeast. Northerly is coming down the inner channels, 20 to 25, 4 to 5 foot seas there, 3 foot seas inside of the Clarence Strait with an easterly wind at 20 knots. Northerly is on the outer coast, 10 knots up north, 4 foot seas there, 20 knots down south with a 10 foot sea outside of the Dixon entrance and around Craig and Cloac. Winds will shift to more of an onshore flow on Saturday. Westerly is up to 20 knots with a 7 to 8 foot sea. Southeasterly is in Stevens Passage, 20 knots with a 4 foot sea. And northerly is back in the Lynn Canal, 25 knots with a 5 foot sea there on Saturday. Saturday. For South Central, northerly is draining out through Prince William Sound and into the northern and western Gulf. 15 to 20 knots, 3 foot seas inside of Prince William Sound and elsewhere. Across the Barrens, a stronger flow continues there. You're going to find some bumps if you're flying back and forth to Kodiak. Uh, six foot seas there. Uh, it looks like north and easterly winds in the Cook Inlet region, 15 to 20, with five foot seas south of Calgon Island and northwesterlies over Kodiak Island. Five foot seas with a 20 to 25 knot wind from the north and west. That'll switch around a little bit more to the north and east by Saturday. Northerlies continue in Cook Inlet, 10 to 25 there, all the way down to the Barrens. Northeasterlies inside of Prince William Sound with a three foot sea and across the western Gulf, 15 to 20 with a 3 to 4 foot sea expected on Saturday. Inside of Bristol Bay, northeasterly is at 15 knots over the ice. Looks like easterly south of Sand Point and all the way out toward False Pass. Five foot seas there on a 25 knot wind. We'll have northerlies from Castle Cape to Chignick, 25 knots with a five foot sea. Uh, that turns to more of a northeasterly direction on Saturday. The winds diminish to 15 and six foot seas are expected while 13 foot seas develop around Sand Point, King Cove and False Pass. And north and easterly winds continue down the Bering Sea coast for your Saturday. For the Aleutians, remember we've got a stronger low pressure system just south of the chain. That's going to develop stronger easterly winds across all of the chain with some of the higher winds and seas from Adak to Kiska and westward. Look for winds there up to 40 to 45 knots, 23 foot seas out across the western chain, 
You're looking at 13 to 23 foot seas across the Pacific coast and 8 to 17 foot seas from Unalaska to Adak on Friday. As we get into Saturday, a look at north and easterly winds across the west coast. Uh, 10 knots around St. Lawrence Island, 20 knots for the uh, Kuskokwim Delta region there. Look for 30 knots around St. Paul and St. George with a 10 foot sea and 25 knots around St. Matthew Island with a 10 foot sea for your Saturday. As we look at Friday there, that's a little funny. The easterlies there across St. Lawrence Island, north and easterly winds on either side of Nunavak Island, 15 to 20. Easterlies around St. Paul and St. George with an 8 foot sea and 6 foot seas there on Friday. Let's uh -huh, interesting. All right, so that's still Friday. Let's try one more and we'll go up to, yes, the North Slope. Uh, westerlies across the Beaufort Sea Coast, 15 to 20 knots. Look for south and westerlies coming up the Chukchi Coast, 15 to 20, and a very light northwesterly flow coming into Kotzebue Sound with a five foot sea there on Friday. As we get into Saturday, light southerlies develop, otherwise, southwesterlies moving up the Chukchi Coast, west and southwesterly winds for the Beaufort Sea Coast, 20 knots from Barrow to Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse and out toward Kaktovik to start the weekend. Recapping tonight's weather, a cold front is crossing the north slope. That is kicking off some areas of light snow with high pressure really still in command of the bulk of the great state. Looks like a 1,025 millibar high there right around Wales. The front will move north and east and gradually fall apart over the next 24 hours. We have low pressure, very ragged across the Pacific Northwest, but it is capable of pushing up some rain and snow to southern parts of the Panhandle and maybe some snow showers up across the north. Rain and easterly winds will develop for many in the central and western chain for Friday. Low pressure continues across uh, the southern parts of southeast with rain and snow showers gradually working northward. More people around Juneau and north will see more clouds than anything else it looks like as we wrap up the weekend. Across the interior, south central, southwest, the west coast, and most of the north, things are going to stay pretty quiet and mostly dry and even clear. So enjoy it while you have it. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.